I am Reverend Dr. Zalalem Chernet. It's from Galila International Seminary College. So as you remember, last time we have started a course named Biblical Management and Leadership. So just to wrap up for the last session, uh, when we say management, it's all about stewardship. And when we say stewardship, that means someone has given us something or interested us for something. Therefore, uh, when, we, when we say biblical management, there is, there is God who has given us a responsibility or who considered us faithful to be, to, to steward, you know, something for others. Um, therefore, believers are, are to manage different things. In the Bible, it is mentioned uh, lots of things. Among them, there is gospel, finance, material, spiritual gifts, and other believers. We need to manage all this. So the first and the foremost thing that we need to manage is a gospel. That's a good news. We are supposed to share the gospel for others. Not only the gospel, finance also. All the resource, all the money we just get from God. Therefore, we need to share for others. Uh, the material, like the building or the equipment, the musical instrument, we need to share one to the other. And the other thing, the spiritual gift is given for each one of us. We need to share for others. It is not given for our own benefit, but for others, just to edify others. So good management is important. Good management is important in church management. There are also leadership fundamentals. These are gifts. Every, every person, every believer is received a gift. Therefore, he or she has to serve the Lord with that gift. And not only that, a leader must be mature enough. He should not be new Christian. He should be matured in the word of God and in knowledge, and skill, and wisdom. The other thing, a leader, a biblical leader, is not tyrant or dictator. He's supposed to be a servant, a servant. Paul called himself as slave or servant of Jesus Christ. Therefore, here in the church, there is a servant leadership, not a lordship. The other thing is, there is commission. The leader is given, commissioned for a purpose. Therefore, a leader must fulfill even the Great Commission, the main one, that is revealed in Matthew chapter 28, verse 18 to 20. We have also looked at the five special leadership positions. These are apostles, prophet, teacher, pastor, and evangelists, which are given for the church. So they are given for the building up of the body, the building of uh, scientists. The other one, there are other spiritual gifts. These are serving gifts, sign gifts, and speaking gifts. You can see this in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Besides that, uh, we have seen what leadership is, but there is also what leadership is not. So leadership is not a title or a position. Leadership is serving. The other one, 
uh, there are gifts and fruit of Holy Spirit for a, bib a biblical leader. So these are very important to serve the Church of God. So today we will continue our uh, second part of the course. So last time, as you remember, we just stopped at uh, specific qualifications for bishops and elders. Uh, we mentioned some points on that, and we will continue. So for bishops and elders must be patient. So they need to have the character. They need to have the fruit of the Holy Spirit. That is patience. That's the opposite of being quick-tempered. There are people who are quick-tempered and distract or destroy many things in the church. Uh, besides, these bishops and elders should not be self-willed. They should not be self-centered. They should not be selfish. They need to be concerned for others instead of themselves. The other qualification is a leader must not be a new convert because he might be boasting, you know. He must have maturity. He must have enough experience. The other thing, he must be loving what is good in the, science, the sight of God. He must be just. He must be fair in dealing with the people. He's he must be also stable in the word. You know, he should be trusted by others. Besides, he must be, or she must be holy, righteous, sanctified, as Titus 1.8 explained. So the bishops and the elders should not fond of sordid gain. That means they should not be greedy for financial gain or benefits. They need to be free from the love of money. They need to manage their own household well. They should be take care of their children and their wives and husbands. Besides, they need to have children who believe in the Lord. The children are supposed to follow the Lord. They need to see Christ in their life. Besides, the, they need to have good reputation with those outside. Maybe those who do not believe, they should testify good things about them. For deacons also, there is a similar qualification for deacons. The first thing, they, they need to have dignity. That means they must be respected and demonstrate a serious mind and character. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 8. They should not be double-tongued. They should not give conflicting reports. They need to be sustainable. They should not be addicted for too much wine. They should not fond of sordid gain, like bishops and elders. They should not be greedy for financial gain. They need to settle in their commitment to the faith. First Timothy chapter 3, verse 10. So deacons are supposed to be the husband of one wife. They need to be good managers of household. They must demonstrate leadership in the family life. Because leadership starts in the household, at home, it started there. They need to be proven. They should not be new converts. They must prove themselves as a believer. What about the additional qualifications for elders, deacons, and de bishops? They must have vision. Leaders must have vision. Knowing your purpose in God's plan, when you say vision is knowing your purpose in God's plan, it's being able to hear God's voice, knowing his will and purposes. So there must be also excellence. A leader should show concern for excellence. A leader must be punctual. A leader must be thorough, a loyal and dependable. 
Besides decisiveness, a leader is supposed to be decisive. That means he must f have the ability to make firm decisions. The other thing, a leader must have humor, the ability to see the funny side of things. A leader must be courageous enough. A leader must not be fearful. The only thing a leader must fear is the Lord. He has to fear the Lord. The other thing, a leader must have a positive attitude. Leaders must develop a positive attitude, a spirit of, in a state of discouragement. A leader must be a keeper. The main task of leadership is to equip people for the work of the ministry. As Ephesians chapter 4 verse 12 stated, authority. A leader should be a man of authority under the authority of God. So that means a leader has, uh, must have, or must show authority, but he must do it under the authority of God. A leader must be dedicated. A leader should be dedicated and committed to the, the God himself. A leader is supposed to be initiators. Some leaders are initiators, some are maintainers, some are confirmers, but good leaders are initiators. Some of them, they just copy from others, they imitate from others. Some of them, they just try to keep the status quo and they are maintainers. Some of them are just confirmers, you know. They look like others, but good leaders are initiators. A leader also must have wisdom on knowledge. The leader should evidence sound thinking and wisdom in decisions and actions. He must have adequate mental ability to know how to lead through training, experience, and guidance of the Holy Spirit. Education is important, but don't forget that Jesus used unlearned men. Education is good, but that has to submit for the wisdom of God. As you remember, the disciples were unlearned, but they learned from Jesus Christ himself. The other thing, experience is needed. Because Joshua was a man with warfare experience, he was selected to lead Israel in the Promised Land. He was a warrior, willing to pay the cost. Jesus said that there was a cost to true discipleship. Therefore, a leader is supposed to be willing to pay the cost, to sacrifice. A leader must have a servant spirit, not a lordship spirit. Christian leaders must develop humble, compassionate, serving spirit and lead like a shepherd. The leader is like God's messenger. That means he focuses, God focuses on the messenger. God's first and foremost focus is the messenger himself. He must have the, the messenger, must have the knowledge and the practical life. As 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verse 1 to 3. So a leader should balance the knowledge and the practical life. Because God's focus is on the messenger. The second thing, the messenger's heart. God is the behavior of his messenger. The Lord said in Isaiah chapter 6, Who will I send? And Isaiah lastly said or responded, Here I am, Lord, send me. So the messenger's heart has to be prepared like this. The other one, the messenger's credibility. As 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 12 said, God is equally concerned about the integrity of the leader's message, that the life match the words, does the practice, match what he preaches. This is very important. So this video course is broadcasted from Galila International Seminary College. Now let's continue. 
the leaders as God's messenger, as we have said. We have seen the focus of God is on the messenger. And the second one is God's focus is on the messenger's heart. And the third one, God's focus is the messenger's credibility. And the last one is the messenger's humanity. In Ezekiel chapter 2, verse 9 to chapter 3, verse 2, God do not want preaching messages, but he wanted a life that touched others. So chapter 5, leading like a servant. Jesus contrasted spiritual leadership with worldly leadership in Mark 10, verse 42 to 44. So simply, when you see the leadership in the world as like they emphasis the leaders emphasized on power. It's not like servant leadership, but spiritual leadership or biblical leadership is leading like a servant. So what sets Christian leadership apart from worldly leadership? The greatest example of leading like a servant was the Lord Jesus Christ. A servant is one who serves others in humbleness, dedication, and love. Jesus both taught and modeled servanthood, as we see in Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. The leaders in the early church followed the pattern set by Jesus. They called themselves servants, and we are to continue in this pattern, as explained Acts for verse 29. Leading like a servant doesn't mean being a weak leader. Four contrasts in leadership. Secular leaders have dominion over their followers. They are oppressive unlike Christians. But Christian leaders are servants. They are not oppressive. They are humble. The second one. Secular leaders exercise authority over their followers. They show superiority. But spiritual leaders or biblical leaders are humble and they just serve others. The third one, secular leaders are chiefs and over their followers, but in Christianity, the one who wants to be first should be last. The first one, secular leaders are lords over those they lead, but Christian leaders serve their followers. How to become a servant leader? Based on Philippians, Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8. The first thing, as Christian leader, one must develop the proper attitude. Leading like a servant, begins with your attitude. It starts from your mind. And Philippians chapter 2, verse 5 to 7, it says your attitude should be the same like of Christ. And the next thing, as a leader, as a servant leader, you need to humble yourself. Jesus already took the form of a servant even though he's God, but he took a form of servant. Philippians chapter 2, verse 7. The other thing, as a servant leader, you need to identify with mankind. You should not stand far off from the flock or the people that you are going to serve. The next thing, as a servant leader, you need to be obedient. That means in order to serve you should be obedient. And you are supposed to die to sin and self. You need to serve in love. And the Lord has to be in church. God himself in church. So you just pray like this. Not my will, but your will be done. What are the best practices in servant leadership? Servant leadership deceptively simple, 
Yet, it's probably the most profound and difficult type of leadership. The first thing, right identity. Seeing oneself as a servant. So the, the, first, the first practice of servant leadership is right identity. When we say right identity, cultivating humility, willing to be the last, willing to be the least. Because Christ emphasized over and over. The next th thing is cultivating selflessness, not I, but Christ. The third thing, we need to cultivate stewardship. We need to say, I am accountable to God and to the people. And the first one, cultivating sense of calling. That means I'm not defined by my position or role, but by God's calling and commissioning. The second thing is, the second one, for best practice in servant leadership is right motivation. That means serving God by serving others. The practice of extending a helping hand. The practice of sacrificing self-interest for others. The practice of bringing out the best in others. The practice of empowering others. So there is one Chinese proverb, and it's to tell you that. It says, if you want one year of prosperity, grow grain. If you want 10 years of prosperity, grow trees. If you want 100 years of prosperity, grow people. Therefore, a leader must invest his skill, his life on the followers. The third one, a servant leadership has got a right method practice. That means relating to others in a positive manner. Among this, listening to others with openness and empathy. Putting your foot on somebody's shoe. Involving others in decision making. You are not supposed to Decide by yourself. You need to involve others. You need to use this participatory method. Engaging others in team building and community building. And you need to affirm others by expressing the confidence you have in them. You need to affirm and you need to express as a servant leader. The fourth Best practice in servant leadership is a right impact, inspiring others to serve a higher purpose, modeling the core values on a daily basis, demonstrating the love in action, challenging others to live for a higher purpose, challenging others to strive for excellence. The fifth one is right character. This is also best practice in servant leadership. When we say right character, it means maintaining integrity and authenticity, walking the talk regardless of the costs, daring to stand up for what one believes in, having the courage to comfort grim realities, engage in honest examination and assessment of one's progress in life's journey. Chapter six, this is leading like a shepherd. Principles of shepherding. As Jesus is a good shepherd, we should follow his steps in John 10. The first one is, it says one fold, one shepherd. So that means one church comprised of born again Christians. One shepherd, that is Jesus. The second one is sheep are given by God. So the Lord God is the one who just gives the sheep. The third one, some sheep will not follow. They might be called, but not follow the shepherd. The fourth one, 
the shepherd knows the sheep. The first one, the sheep know the shepherd at the same time. And six, the shepherd cares for the sheep. As Psalm 23, verse 3, he restored my soul. Therefore, the shepherd cares for the sheep. He knows them by their name. That means caring for the sheep means he will make the sheep free from pests. He anoints his head with oil so as to make the sheep free of disease, sickness, and infection. He will make free from hunger and thirst. Seven, the shepherd disciplines the sheep. He leads me in the paths of righteousness. Therefore, sometimes he might discipline the sheep. But for the sake of the sheep's interest. The eighth one, the shepherd helps cast down sheep. John 15, 15, it says, you can do nothing without me. Cast down when a sheep rolled over on its back and cannot get up by itself. When we say cast down, this is the meaning. So the sheep may settle down in ease when they get green pasture and they settle, they will, they will feel contented. They get in their comfort zone, just like the people get material ease, you know, they will be in their comfort zone. Sometimes the sh when the sheep have too much wool, the saints, besides, when sheep become too fat, it is difficult for them just to get up. So Christians also who take things of God but do not share are exactly the same. So only the shepherd can help them. The leader can help them. The ninth one, the shepherd leads the sheep. Leadership is going ahead of sheep and leads not behind them and beats. The tenth one, the shepherd serves willingly. Feed the flock willingly. First Peter chapter 5, verse 2. The shepherd gives his life for the sheep, and the shepherd protects the sheep. So this is a great example that we can see from Lord Jesus. This course is broadcasted from Galila International Seminary College. Now we proceed. There are also warnings or shepherds. There are warnings which are given for bad shepherds. If the shepherds do not fulfill their responsibility, there are some warnings put in Ezekiel chapter 34. Bad shepherds are who do not feed the flock. We can see from Ezekiel chapter 34, verse 2, 4, and 6. There are bad shepherds who rob and take selfish, selfishly from the sheep, verse 3 and 4. They are so cruel. They just take everything from the sheep. These are ravenous wolves or bad shepherds. Besides, they just take care for themselves. Instead of taking care for the sheep or the flock, they just take care of themselves. These are bad shepherds. Beware of them. They don't care for the needs of the flock or the sheep. They just only care for themselves. The first one, they don't seek the lost. They, to they don't seek them. They are not run after them. They are running after their own business. They are running after their own benefits. They rule with force and power. They scatter the sheep. They let the enemy to destroy the flock or the sheep. They let the diseases of sin to the flock. However, 
for the good shepherds there is a promise we see this in first peter chapter 5 verse 4 so if you are following the biblical principles of leading like a shepherd you can claim this promise when the chief shepherd shall appear you shall receive a crown of glory that fades not away so for the good shepherds they will receive from the lord a crown of life chapter 7 tasks of leaders what are the tasks of leaders leaders have some tasks the first priority of christian leader is to perfect believers for the work of ministry as ephesians chapter 4 verse 11 to 12 stated the next thing that the leaders task is setting example they need to set proper examples to followers or for their flocks the third one is they need to care for the followers they need to be caring and the first one they need to lead a leader must lead and guide the fourth one is decision making you are required to make many decisions handling conflicts and disciplines analyzing the environment understanding their problems needs and concerns so in this unit we have seen some of the characteristics of leaders as we have said the leaders the leaders should know that God's concern is on the messenger. So the first focus of God is the messenger himself. And the next thing is the messenger's heart. And the third one, the messenger's credibility and the messenger's humanity are very important. Biblical leadership is leading like a servant. And we can see from the life of Jesus. Secular, secular leadership and biblical leadership or spiritual leadership are two different things. So spiritual leadership or biblical leadership is being a servant to lead. But this secular leadership is leading the people through power and through force. Therefore, in secular leadership, the concern is for the leader, you know. The leader is concerned about himself. But biblical leadership is focusing on others, on the flock or the people that he leads. Secular leaders have dominion over their followers. But biblical leaders are humble enough. Secular leaders exercise authority over their followers, but biblical leaders serve with love. Secular leaders are lords over their followers, but biblical leaders are servant leaders. They just identify themselves with the people. They are obedient. They die to sin and self. They serve in love. They develop proper attitude and they humble themselves as we see in the life of Jesus Christ in Philippians chapter 2. The, right, the other thing that we have seen is the best practices in servant leadership. The first one is right identity, that is seeing oneself as a servant. The other thing is right motivation, serving God by serving others. The third one is right method, relating to others in a positive manner. And the fourth one is right impact. The fifth one is right character. They need to maintain integrity and authenticity, as we have said. And we have also saw that uh, we need leaders, biblical leaders or Christian leaders are supposed to lead like a shepherd. 
So based on John chapter 10, they, they need to know some things. The first thing, they need to keep unity. Then they need to know that the followers are given by God. The third one, some of the flocks or some of the followers may not follow them. They should be aware of this. And the fourth one, the shepherd or the leaders should know their flocks or their followers. And the other thing, the sheep should know the shepherd. And the other one is the shepherd cares for the sheep.